with that said, let's move to the forwards. I think this one, we this is where it goes to hell. This is this is both I think Gre- some of Greg's best work and some of his worst ever. Oh Lord, here are the names: Christian Pulisic, Jesus Ferreira, Jordan Morris, Gio Reyna, Josh Sargent, Timothy Weah, and Haji Wright. The three strikers, of course, are Ferreira, Sargent, and Haji Wright at the expense of Ricardo Pepe, Jordan Pifak, and Brandon Vasquez, all not in the team. And then the wingers, Pulisic, Morris, I guess Reyna, and Weya at the expense of Ariola. Tillman's a guy who can also play on the wing. I mean, I, I guess really just the big one that's not there is Paul Ariola. And for a guy who has been – no one has been selected under Greg more than Paul Ariola. 31. Oh, 31 is, caps under Burhalter. That has got to be a gut punch and a half for him. Coming off of the best season of his MLS career for Dallas – I feel for him, but I understand the decision. And here's what I'll say about the wingers. Pulisic, Reyna, Wea, and Morris. I th- and Aronson. Just put Aronson. And, and, and Aronson is, is probably going to play more winger than he plays in the middle, let's be real. I mean, as far as if you're going to bring five wingers, I think I think those are your best five. Yep. And and while I still think Reyna should be a central midfielder, and I think that would free up a spot for Areola to be on the plane here, um, I'm okay with it because... People are people are saying how is Jordan Morris make it over over Pepe? I don't think Morris takes a spot from no. Pepe here. I think Morris takes a spot from Ariola, and I think it's okay because Ariola did have that big goal against Panama in World Cup qualifying on the final match day or second to last match day. But Jordan Morris has scored big goals as well. Had that goal at the death against El Salvador in those awful conditions. You know, Gold Cup final winner 2017. Um, led led the team in goals in 2019. I know that was he scored like five against Cuba alone. I know I know that I know that's a different scenario but the fact is Jordan Morris even with the not great form he had for Seattle and a Seattle team that missed the playoffs for the first time in their MLS history um, I think he br- brings more in the final third than Paul Ariola. I, I know he doesn't have may- maybe the same legs that Ariola does now he doesn't run up and down as much and doesn't cover much ground doesn't press as effectively defensively but he scores more goals and he does better for the national team so I'm I'm okay with Morris being the last of the wingers as for the strikers I am very, very disappointed that the man who got Greg Berhalter to this World Cup, Ricardo Pepe, is not in the team. He kept him his job. Kept, let's not that. Let's yeah. not forget that. He <laughs> got he got Greg. He kept Greg's job for him. Haji Wright is a player that I've long since wanted to see get integrated into the national team, and I'm so happy for him that he's here. Also, in the form of his life, scored I think eight goals in the Turkish league this year. Yep. He's he's been he's been really good, but I you cannot be at the expense of the guy who got you into the World Cup, especially since. There is no certainty that this striker, that these three strikers are going to score goals for us. Are you kidding me? Sargent, love what he's doing in Norwich. He's actually the only Norwich player to be at the World Cup this year, and I'm very happy for him. And if for me, he would be my starter with these three. Ferreira had a great he, year with Dallas, but like he can't, do, he can't get the job done. And Haji Wright, I think, is just a gamble. Yeah, I think. And I'm happy we finally arrived here because I think this is where the most discussion is, especially when we talk about roster spots going to. You know, guys like Christian Roldan, guys like Shaq Moore. I agree with you saying I think Morris deserves to be in this side. I think very similar to how Sean Johnson was selected, I think there's a little bit of sympathy that goes into that vote, which when it comes at the expense of a guy like Paul Areola, who you know probably had a really strong sense going into this selection that his name would be called, it does sting a bit. But I do think Jordan Morris provides, as James mentioned, you know, he plays really well in this U.S. system for whatever reason. I think Greg trusts him a lot more than he trusts Ariola, And the fact of the matter is, one neither of those guys I don't think are going to win you a World Cup game. I'm much more comfortable subbing Jordan Morris on in a 2-1 game in which the U.S. is leading or a 1-0 game in which the United States is leading. You know, I could literally, I could be fine seeing him go play striker in a game that we're leading and just let him run because... If there's one thing Jordan Morris has made a name for himself for this U.S. team for so long is that when he's out on that pitch, he cares a whole lot, which I think, you know, sometimes you can yes, say does. there's disinterested members of this group. You know, we remember a couple of years ago when Alexi Lalas went on that famous rant about them being selfish, overpaid millionaires. I still think there's some of that is true, even with this group. They're just more talented. But Jordan Morris is a guy, every time he puts on that shirt and steps out onto that field, he gives 110%, presses like a maniac, and, you know, when he has a chance to score, he oftentimes does so for the red, white, and the blue. So him over Paul Ariola, I'm fine with. Pulisic, Reyna, and Timothy Wea. I think them with Aronson were always going to be your strikers. 
it's going to be interesting to see with, you know, those are three really, really good strikers. It's probably going to be Pulisic, Reyna to start with Timmy Weah coming off the bench. I really think Aronson and Weah both deserve a chance to play in this World Cup, and they will. I Again, reiterating what we said about the midfield, Reyna should be in the midfield group. I think he, as good as Aronson looked against Morocco, I think Aronson is just a better winger than he is a midfielder. And, you know, maybe it's 97 versus 96 in terms of, you know, his overall rating wherever he is. But I think he is a guy that excels when he plays out wide, and we've seen it this year for Leeds. Then we get to the strikers, and this is when the, you know, Shaq Moores, Christian Roldan's real. Start to make way less way less sense. Because, and I'm going back to this thing Greg Burhalter said, because Taylor Twelman asked him, and pl- credit to Taylor Twelman for asking it, he said, how close was Jordan Peefock getting selected? He's like, you know, when we look at this thing, you know, we we see Haji Wright just in really good form, and that's kind of what cemented it. As if Pepe isn't turning his entire European career around. I can't pronounce the club name because Gronigan. Gronigan. Yeah, from from the Eredivisie, and then Peefock with Union Berlin, one of the top goal scorers in the Bundesliga. He cites form for Haji Wright, which is fine because Haji Wright is in the form of his life, and he has proven himself with the way he's been playing in the Turkish League this year, to be on this plane. Jesus Ferreira, as good as he was for FC Dallas this year, you know, had a breakout season. He has been terrible for the United States men's national team since his debut. And I really am just disgusted. And Josh Sargent deserves to be there. Between his form in Norwich, and he was always kind of heralded as this guy, he is a good striker. Will he perform like a good striker? I don't know, but he definitely needs to be there. I think Pepe and Pifak both deserve to be on that plane, though, because we can say Pepe saved Burhalter his job, which is 100% accurate. But also, the way this national program treated Ricardo Pepe is actually disgusting, and it really does bother me because he had a, came out of the gates, was incredible, probably did save Greg Burhalter from getting sacked around this time last year, and what do they do? As soon as he stumbles in form, you know, he makes the move to Augsburg, doesn't really hit his stride in Germany because there's a huge gap going from the MLS to playing in Europe. They just throw him away and they pick up the new shiny new toy that is Jesus Ferreira. And he's only only, only playing striker because Pepe moved on to to Augsburg. Right. So I'm really, I'm really am disgusted at the way they've discarded Ricardo (laughs) Pepe. And there's a chance, and I'm. I think Haji Wright starts the first game against Wales. I think in Greg Berhalter's mind, it goes Haji Wright, Jesus Ferreira, Josh Sargent as his three strikers. Because I he for some reason he loves Jesus Ferreira, and we saw it, you know, in the la- I just remember in that last World Cup qualifying, you know, match week, how bad Jesus Ferreira looked, and he has just not gotten out of that. And you know. Again, as good as he's looked for FC Dallas, when he's played international opponents, he's looked terrible. So I don't think he should have made, he should not have been on this plane. I think I'm going to start with the Jordan Morris over Ariola thing. For me, if I if we're losing a game late and I need and we need somebody in the box, we're going to be sending crosses into the box. We need somebody to, to score a pieces. scrappy goal off a set piece, something like that. Jordan Morris can do that a lot better than Paul Ariola. Yes. I think the main reason why people are a little bit shocked that Ariola isn't on this roster is because when's the last time we've had all of our wingers fit and healthy? Never. No, that Never. is that is that that's is the reason the why our takeaway. That's the really the only reason why Ariola is not on this roster is because Tim Way is healthy, Gio Rain is healthy, Christian Pulisic's healthy, knock Brendan on, Aronson. Dude, they're the fact knock on wood. They're all healthy. <laughs> We haven't seen that in a very long time. Almost That's never. why we've Almost seen never. Weah start a bunch when, when Rain is injured. We've seen Rain start when Weah is injured. We've seen all these different combinations. We've seen Ariola when there's two of them injured. That's the main reason why Paul Ariola is not in the squad, just because we have a healthy group of what Greg considers to be wingers. So Jordan Morris has battled back from two ACL injuries. I think he, he deserves to be there, and I think he'll make more of an impact than Paul Ariola would, would have. I mean, if, if I think if any one of these players are injured, Paul Ariel is the, the the next guy up, which is pretty obvious. But in terms of the strikers, I do have I have a quite a gripe with not bringing Ricardo Pepe. Um, at age you know eighteen, he scores in World Cup qualifying against that Honduras game on the road when vibes are low. He scores the, we're down a goal in the second half. He scores. We're back. He gets us back in the game. He re-energizes us, and then he scores two against against Jamaica. Um, 
And he's just a big part of what we're doing in, in that fall part of that cycle. And he's in great form in FC Dallas. There's all sorts of rumors about him going to to Europe and replying his trade. So he does that. He goes to Augsburg. He takes a leap in his career. And it doesn't work out. So then he, he doesn't get called into a couple camps when he's not playing well at Augsburg. He sees the World Cup coming and and takes it upon himself to to get playing time. And he, he make, takes a step down to get playing time, to get his form underneath him. Five goals to and start, eight appearances. To start scoring goals, to do whatever he can to get back into the squad. And he does exactly that. He scores. He, he looks like the old Ricardo Pepe. He scored against some big-time opposition, too, in the Eredivisie. And he's rewarded for his efforts, for, for you know, saving Greg Berhalter's job, you know, struggling, being a young teenager in Europe, going through it, and then bouncing back and... And getting back into great form, he's rewarded with not being on the roster. To me, it just it just rubs me the wrong way how you can bring in a guy like that and how he can make such an impact and then get back to that level and then leave him off. It's also the fact that, like I said earlier, Jesus Ferreira is the FC Dallas starting striker not playing a little bit further back because Ricardo Pepe moved on. That's that's a lot of the reason why Jesus Ferreira is, is starting up top. I mean, Jesus was playing further back when, when, when Pepe was there. And it's just interesting to me that, that Pepe challenged himself in his career and, and took a leap, and it seems like he's being punished for it. I have no gripes against, really, Haji Wright being on the roster. Jesus Ferrer was always going to be there, so I can't really get mad at that. I think Josh Sargent also deserves to be there. I think we just have a lot of strikers who are really close to each other in terms of ability and also in terms of form. Someone was going to be unhappy. And I think it just it, it it happened to be Ricardo Pepe. To me, Pfock was a little bit further away, but Pepe's Pepe's the egregious one. And, and before we get into R twenty six, because James, I I know you got class coming up. The one thing I will say is this is more important than class. <laughs> the the one thing that really bothered me is Burhalter's explanations for Sargent. He was saying that he shown he can be effective in a you know very physical league in the championship, which I mean is true, but realistically. And this gets into Jesus Ferreira too, and maybe you can even extend it to Christian Roldan. He says Ferreira is there because he understands the team's game model, which only you really give a damn about is if he's going to see the field, which suggests to me that he is. And leaving Ricardo Pepe off is just really ignorant to the growth that he's had. And it, you know, he talks about Haji Wright, you know, being the leading scorer in the Turkish league. And Burhalter talked about how you know, let's not forget that. Belgian's starting striker, Miki Batshuayi, also plays in the Turkish league and only has four goals to Haji Wright's eight. And Burhalter said something effective, and uh, Batshuayi plays for a better team. So what does that tell you about Haji Wright? It tells you absolutely nothing about Haji Wright. You can't, com- <laughs> you can't compare how Haji Wright plays in his system to how Miki Batshuayi plays in his system. And you know what? When Haji Wright plays for a team like Chelsea, plays for a team like Dortmund, plays like for a team like Valencia, all of which Mickey Batshuayi has, then you can make those comments. But you can't make them now. So I think as we went through this roster, <clears throat> it all comes back down to, at least for me, there are certain people that Greg Burhalter thinks he cannot live without, and that you know comes at a price of leaving certain guys off the roster. And you know it's a difficult situation, but with 26 p- spots, as so we get into our own 26, and I'll let you kick that off, James, because I need to cool down. All right. But as you got tw- you got three extra spots, you have to make you have to fill those with impact players. Every other country in the world that has the depth that the United States does, and it's crazy to say that we have depth, but there are guys that got left off that who can impact a game ten times more than guys that were included. Yeah, and you know, let to to end before we get into our own opinions on a positive, um, twenty to twenty two of these guys that are on here belong here, and those are going to be. <clears throat> excuse me, those are going to be the bulk of the guys who are going to be playing the bulk of the minutes and are going to be the important players for this team. But with that said, guys 23 through 26 are still important. They're there for a reason, and we would like to see a little bit more of that. One thing I will say about specific player, Tim Weah um, is a guy that I think no one, no one else in this player pool has a profile like him, and I think he's a guy that ideally you'd like to have start, but... If your wingers are Pulisic and Reyna, Wea and Aronson are probably both going to be on the bench to start. So that's that's a good problem to have for the U.S., the fact that you Play could... Play Pulisic at the nine, Greg. 
I'm saying here's what I'm gonna say. He mentioned last night that Tim Way is a guy who is good getting in behind, who is, can play really quick, but also has skill and can use that skill on any of the front three positions where he's a true winger. He said, but he can also play as a striker. That is the fact that he's he said that. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I maybe if in the group in the third game of the group stage when we're really struggling and we need we need a win to get out and we're you know we're nil nil against Iran or something and we need a goal. Uh, late, I could see us playing with a midfield and front three combined of Adams, Musa, McKenney, Reyna, Pulisic, Weah as your nine, and then Aronson as your impact sub. To me, that is pretty. That's pretty impressive. So, while we can be a little bit negative sometimes, let's not forget what we have. Um, we have maybe one of the best generations in U.S. soccer history. 